The Honorable Member for Prince Albert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was just wanted to listen to this, uh, this presentation, and I, I did hear it from the block as well. I, I've come to the conclusion that maybe what we should have is a special law to, that prohibits uh, big corporations from distributing and selling prescription drugs to NDP members and their supporters, and maybe block members as well, because we wouldn't want them to take something that they, that they feel is, is unscientific and wouldn't have any benefit. Let's, let's be clear. To get a drug cleared through the clinical process, for everyone that's cleared, there are literally thousands of them that don't get to first base. This is not a slam dunk process, and it costs an awful lot of money. And there's a lot of other safeguards. The EU has a clinical process that's very tough. The Japanese have one that's very tough. The Americans have one that's very tough. And if you fail in the United States, you get through the entire process and get your drug approved, and you make the, you can be financially ruined by the American tort system. But for some member of this House to say that, that we're just allowing drugs out into the market without any due diligence or any, uh, any comprehension for public safety and that there's some great conspiracy between members of Parliament and the drug companies to hoist all these poisonous and toxic drugs on people, to me is total nonsense, and I, I really believe the member actually believes that. I, I don't want to criti criti uh, uh, suggest that... Uh, really disagree too strongly with her opinion because it might insinuate that I, I, I'm challenging her intelligence. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Member for Winnipeg North. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a very serious matter, not a laughing matter, um, and it, it has to be debated in, in that context of being something that is of health and well-being of Canadians. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I make my comments with all seriousness and based on significant input from many Canadians. And as I also said, Mr. Speaker, we will, in fact, pursue every one of those concerns at committee to determine the legitimacy. No one is making generalizations without basis. In fact, no one is casting aspersions without any reason. We are here today with one of the most important pieces of legislation this Parliament has seen in a long time, and questioning on the basis of evidence that has been provided to us. Mr. Speaker, I don't need to tell you or anyone else how many Canadians' lives are put at risk every day because we don't have an adequate safety system right now. All I have to do is read through the papers and, and list off uh, numerous cases today. Maybe the member is interested in this one if he's not interested in some of the others. Here's one recall ordered a product for erectile dysfunction. This is uh, le Libidus, an unauthorized product promoted on its manufacturer's website for treating erectile dysfunction, saying it doesn't produce health risks. Well, it does, Mr. Speaker. Where's the government? How about Evra, uh, another uh, um, uh, birth uh, control for women, a patch? that produces blood clot risks. Why is that? Why are young women at risk forever right now as we speak? What about um, smoking uh, drug uh, that came out not too long ago, Sh Shampix, which produces all kinds of psychiatric side effects? What about, as I mentioned, heparin, which has contaminants uh, found uh, after the production in China? What about all these examples? Doesn't it matter? Shouldn't Canadians feel safe? And isn't that what we're here for? It is not Absolutely. to make people, uh, uh, to put them at the will of the marketplace and let them take chances. It is about trusting government. And if you can't trust government when it comes to the safety of the drugs you have to take and the food we have to eat, then when can you trust government? The Honourable Member for Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia. Prince Al uh, oh, I, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, unlike my colleague from uh, Prince Albert, I actually love the loony left. The loony left um, allows, allows uh, uh, people like um, the average Canadian to, to see the, uh, the ridiculousness of, of, the, of the arguments. I, you know, I, I commend the member on the passion of her uh, case, but I think the member knows that um, she is mistaken 
on uh, numerous points, in concluding uh, the suggestion that somehow product or drugs coming onto the market are less safe. This bill, this bill doesn't deal with that. Uh, the drugs uh, that uh, have come onto the market um, are under the same, same re regime uh, with or without uh, this bill. So I think that's important for the member to, to know. I also, uh, on the issue of direct consumer advertising, the member also knows that this government in court uh, to prevent direct advertising uh, of pharmaceuticals to the Canadian market. The member knows that, uh, and this bill, in fact, uh, strengthens uh, the government's position on that. I also like to read to the member um, section 2.3 of the bill, and it's the purpose. The purpose of this act is to protect and promote the health and safety of the public and encourage accurate and consistent product representation by prohibiting and regulating certain activities in relation to food, therapeutics, products, and cosmetics. So, as you can see, the intent uh, is, is in the best interests of Canadians. And I, I, I'd like to ask the, the members to um, maybe put aside uh, the worries about the black helicopters and, uh, and put away the tinfoil hats and, and uh, come to committee with an open mind uh, all the other parties are. We are. If there are reasonable su suggestions uh, for amendment, uh, we'll listen to it. Um, will the member committee with an open mind and and uh, listen to uh, the facts and read the bill for what is an improvement to the health and safety of Canadians? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Mr. Speaker, you will know that I have already said we come to this whole process with an open spirit, wanting to know if, in fact, the, the substance of the bill meets the work of this government. And so we enter this process willingly and with open minds. And I just wish the Honourable Member also was open to some of the concerns being raised, because when he suggests that this is about the loony left speaking, he's insulting hundreds of Canadians, thousands of Canadians across this country who are raising concerns. He is actually casting aspersions on Dr. Bar Mary Wotoverwitz. He's casting aspersions on Joel Lexian, on Dr. Barbara Mincy's, on Dr. Steve Morgan, and the, on Alan Castles, many people who came to our committee and expressed these concerns. So I hope he is open, and I hope he is willing to actually amend the bill when those uh, concerns have been uh, substantiated. Further questions and comments? Honourable Member for Yukon. Thank you. Um, well, another one of those persons that they could have cast aspersions, one of my uh, constituents that asked these questions, and I wanted to ask the government, but they're not putting any speakers up. Just the minister introduced it, so I can't ask the question. So maybe the uh, member could ask just three concerns uh, that this uh, constituent put forward. Um, will this new law be used to abuse any special interest groups, minorities, religious groups, or others? Um, why do the bureaucrats want seizure warrants with judge approval and with fines being increased a thousand times and seizing authority without a warrant, is Bill C-51 meant to bankrupt and silence its target audience? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Mr. Speaker, I think those are all uh, questions that need to be uh, addressed by the government and uh, vetted at our committee. And I certainly encourage the member to uh, to uh, encourage those who have raised these concerns to present them in writing or to the committee or to, in fact, uh, have them attend our committee hearings. I hope that we will have a wide open, serious, in-depth review of this bill in terms of all of its aspects, because when it comes to uh, issues around uh, judicial oversight and, and RCMP investigations, as he has mentioned, these are very serious issues. When we're talking about direct consumer advertising, progressive licensing, natural health products, oversight, investigative forces, uh, and, and discretionary powers, all of those issues are critically important on, a, on an area of such fundamental importance. I look forward to a very serious, serious debate and in-depth discussion on this bill. Resuming debate, the Honourable